All right, hi guys, and welcome back. Uh, Ryan here again. So we're going to continue our trend of uh, talking about buying uh, trucks, whether they're new or used. Um, in the last video, we talked about different engines options. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk about different transmissions out there and uh, kind of my opinion of those and um, some, some facts thrown in there, I guess, as well. Um, so that's pretty much that. Um, if you are new to the channel, uh, first time you watch us, uh, what we were into truck maintenance, trucking business. I was an owner-operator myself uh, for several years. If you didn't know, I was a mechanic and one owner-operator. I'm back to mechanic now. So got a little bit of both sides of the world uh, as far as the trucking business goes. Um, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, maintenance, uh, trucking business and all that, uh, please subscribe. And um, always uh, like the video. If, uh, if you give us that thumbs up, that's the uh, best thing you can do to help support the channel. Okay, so first of all, there's basically two main types of transmissions. You're gonna have your regular manuals with a shifter on floor, and then you got your automateds or automatics. They call them automatics, but it's not the same type of automatic that's like in your car or your pickup truck or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna start off with talking about different manual transmissions and uh, my the ones I like and some different perks and things like that, and then we'll kind of go on from there. All right, guys, so manual transmission. So predominantly in this time we live in, uh, you're mainly going to see your, your straight 10, your 10 speeds, uh, 13 speeds, 18 speeds. Um, I've never driven a 15 speed. I know they're out there, um, but it's not, not something I, I'm, I'm too familiar with. Um, nine speeds are, are still out there. See a few of those. Um, and that's pretty much... Uh, what you're going to see out there. You don't see uh, the older Super 10s and all that. Those are kind of a thing of the past. Uh, my personal favorite is probably a 13 speed for, um, you know, doing, doing lighter flatbed type stuff, you know, where you're not, where you're not doing oversized or heavy loads. And also for dry van, um, I think a 13 speed works really well. Um, they're a durable, good transmission, durable. Uh, and you, you, you kind of get the best of both worlds where a 13 speed, if you didn't know, is uh, basically a nine speed, but on the top gears, top four gears, you got a splitter and you could do a half a gear. So I believe you get down like with a, with like a 10 speed, when you're going from gear to gear, you're right around like 30% step up between each gear, I believe. Um, but with a uh, with 13 speed, you're able to go in between those two gears and it, uh, you get a lot, it's not as steep as a jump. So I think you're like at 12, 12 or 17% jump up and, and gear uh, the percentage between each gear basically so I'm not 100% on this I'm just coming off the top of my head um, so don't don't hold me to those numbers but it's along those lines basically uh, so that that makes it a lot easier if you're if you're grossing 80,000 you're going over you know out uh, going over coming up out Cheyenne on a 80 or something pulling a grade instead of having to, to jump down that 30% you can basically split that in half, um, so you're not lugging the truck as much. So you can keep the truck in a, your, your engine running in a tighter RPM range also. So it's easier on the truck and better fuel economy. Um, and also, I mean, I've heard of guys with some of the, I know when I had my, I had a 2017 T680, had a Packard MX-13 455 uh, multi-torque engine, 13 speed, 336 rear ends. And uh, with, with that 13 speed and driving the way I, I do, which is for most people unreasonable the way I, I've, I've driven, you know, if it, the sign says 80 mile an hour, I'm driving 85 mile an hour, if not 85. Um, or is that 75, I'm running 75. So I, I put the pedal down. And uh, with that combination over basically all miles, I mean, I was still averaging roughly, you know, seven and a half or so, which is, you know, seven to seven and a half, which is pretty decent mileage uh, for running uh, those speeds that I was running cross country, you know. Um, so that's my personal favorite is the 13 speed. So uh, 18 speed is basically the same transmission, but you have the ability to split those gears on the low side of the transmission, which in my opinion, unless you're doing like heavy haul and stuff like that, some off-road stuff, uh, I don't really see a reason to have an 18 speed because really those lower gears, you're never going to use them. So a lot of guys are like, oh, I got to get 18 speed, like, and you're pulling drive in, it just, and it's just really... Yeah, it might be nice to have maybe once a year or something, but really you're never going to use those lower end gears because they're so they're so low. I mean, even you know most of us that's driven a 10 speed or a 13 speed, I mean you'll go right to fourth or fifth gear and start out. So I mean you're not going to use all those lower gears, you know, in that lower range. So 
but it's basically the same transmission. You can just have the ability to split those lower gears as a 13 speed. So um, the next would be a 10 speed, which uh, is kind of has been kind of the the workhorse most most companies. If you're a company driver, you know, 70 years ago, most companies that's what they're using because they're they're hard to tear up for the most part. Um, they're easy easy for people to shift. I mean, you just got five years on the bottom, five years on the top, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so they're if you're a new new to manuals, which I know a lot of the schools these days out there, they're not they're teaching guys in automatics, so now they have the restrictions for uh, for manuals. So I mean, if you're first kind of stepping into manual the manual side, I mean, it, it might be good to start out with a 10 speed and then look, kind of learn that out. Because when you get into a 13 or an 18, when you got you got two you got your high low range and you got your splitter up there to split the gears, it can be a little. I've myself forgotten what gear I was in. Then you go, you, then you go make a mistake, and the truck makes a god awful noise, like you're gonna throw the drive shaft out of the side of it or something. So, um, so that's something that, that takes a little while to learn on, and all that good stuff. Uh, so, for the most part, that's that's pretty much. Uh, I like I said I like manuals because you know unless my hand's broken and it isn't moving that shifter, I know that that truck's gonna shift gears, um, and and it's they're simple. They're cheap to repair. Um, the truck behind me, uh, it had a, thir a 13 speed in it. The uh, transmission went out of it. And I went up, uh, actually, the customer went up and got a transmission, a new rebuilt transmission. 3300 bucks, I believe, he paid. I didn't pay tax on it. And I think my labor on this would be 1500 2000 roughly. Um, so he's got a new rebuilt transmission in here with labor and all that all in for, you know, in the 5000 5, to $5,500 range, roughly. Um, so they're just, it's just all metal, you know, it's all steel. There's no, there's no electronics, no computers, none of that stuff, you know, so they're, they're pretty simple, cheap to maintain, and you're not adding the computer and all that to the equation of extra sensors and all that, um, which I'll get into in the second part of this video, which would be automatic. So with that, we'll go ahead and uh, move on. Okay, guys, so automatic transmissions. Well, they're not actually automatics in the sense that you would think like in your pickup truck or car, as I said at the beginning of this video. Uh, automated, automated, they, yeah, the, the correct term is automated instead of an automatic, um, but uh, they are actually a manual transmission with a computer solenoid deal on top of it that actually shifts the gears. You still have a clutch, which the clutches are a lot more expensive than they are in a manual. Um, I know I think I priced one for a Freightliner and the clutch for an automated transmission was like $2,500 roughly where I can get a clutch for a manual transmission for like $750. Um, but there is, there is a clutch in there. It does have a, you know, um, actuation device, solenoid, whatever, that actually pushes the clutch in and shifts the gears. So those transmissions, they are still like a manual transmission, but it's just all automated, you know, computerized, sensors, solenoids, actuators, et cetera, et cetera, wire harnesses and all that good stuff. Um, the, the, the positive, the, there's really only two positives in my, well, maybe three, um, in my opinion, with an automated transmission. Um, one, they, they're optimized for fuel economy. So you're gonna get a lot better fuel economy because you're taking the human element out. You got a machine that has certain parameters where it shifts it at a certain time and it, they're optimized for fuel economy. So obviously, with an automatic transmission, you, you know, if you're driving sensibly, you know, the 65 mile an hour guy or something like that, you, you know, a lot of times you can expect to get eight, nine mile a gallon is what I've heard. So, so you're going to get better mileage. Um, the second plus is you can throw anybody in there. If you're looking to hire somebody else on, start a small fleet, you know, if you're thinking down the road, like I'm going to, I bought, I'm going to buy this truck now, then I'm going to put some, I'm going to buy me another one and put somebody else in this one. Um, there's a lot of guys out there that have restrictions on their CDL now for, for, for manual transmissions, so they can't drive manual, so you're going to have to have an automated truck. Um, and then the other part of that is, I mean, I guess if you've got a, a driver that don't know how to drive a manual, um, even though he might be able to be licensed to drive it, you know, not all of them are. Guys can be really hard on transmissions and clutches and all that. Um, so I guess there's less risk of a, of a, you know, if you're hiring another driver to put in a truck, there's less risk of tearing that transmission and clutching and all that stuff up. Uh, so that's a plus. Um, so maybe there's four. <laughs> um, the other thing is uh, traffic. So, so if you're driving like big city driving and cities and stuff like that, a lot of stop and go and automatic or automated can be nice uh, to where you're not having to clutch all the time and, 
and, uh, you know, and bumper to bumper traffic type of thing. Uh, so that, that's a plus too, I guess. Um, but that's kind of, in my opinion, that's kind of the, the three or four main things that are positives. And then after that, it kind of gets really negative to me uh, because these, first thing is these transmissions, they're extremely, they're expensive uh, to work on. The parts are expensive. And uh, you've added another computer module, you've added a bunch of sensors, a bunch of electronic actuators, you added the wiring harnesses, and then the way that it, that it ties in with the rest of the truck and talks to everything. Um, so you've added a whole bunch more elements in there that, uh, that can become problems, you know, as they do with everything else. And, you know, like with the emission systems and stuff on trucks like that, it's all wiring, sensors, and all that. So with these transmissions, you've added a whole other layer of those problems into the equation. So that's why I'm not a big fan of them personally. So there's several different uh, makes and models. I know uh, Volvo makes their own. I believe Packard's making their own. Um, uh, Eaton Fuller makes them. So there's several different makes, automatic transmissions. I just kind of lump them all in the end because there's, they all have the good things, bad things, and all that. Um, like I said, me personally, I'm, I'm not a big fan of them because I think they're extremely expensive if you have problems and then um, you add that extra element of uh, wiring and, and computers and all that type of stuff. So, but again, I'm not going to get into specifics on different makes and all that. Um, so I just going to kind of do an overall, basically, you know, manual to automatic for the most part. Um, yeah, so it, like I said, if you're looking to, to hire drivers and stuff like that, I mean, you may want to consider uh, going with an, an automated transmission. That way, you don't have to worry about you know trying to find a driver that is that's able that has doesn't have a manual restriction and all that type of stuff. And then, uh, like I said, again, you, I mean, it, me personally, if I was looking to put guys in the trucks, and I would unfortunately probably go with the automated ones, even though I, I'm not a big fan of them, just for a simple fact, it gives me a bigger hiring base for one. Uh, two, uh, you know, less wear and tear on the truck since the computer's doing the work. But then again, once it does kind of come time for breakdowns and maintenance and all that, you're going to expect to pay a lot more to have work done on the automated. I mean, for this job I'm doing here, the automated transmissions, I mean, in size, they're like twice the size of a manual transmission, you know, because some of them are like 12 speeds and stuff like that. So they're, they're, uh, they can be really big transmissions and uh, they're harder to handle. And then, like I said, with the, with the wiring harness computers and all that type of stuff, it's all more cost that you're going to get into with uh, maintaining those. I mean, you are going to gain some fuel mileage with, with the prices of fuel these days. Um, that can be a significant savings, you know, two miles per gallon or something is, you know, eight mile the gallon versus six mile the gallon. You're looking at a 25%, uh, 20-25% uh, difference in fuel costs. So if you're spending $50,000 a year, I mean, you could be looking at, you know, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 difference, so that could make up for the maintenance costs. Those are all things to consider when you're making that choice. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, like I said, just kind of doing a rough overview, kind of telling, giving you guys my thoughts and my opinions with, like I said, a little bit of fact thrown in there, hopefully. Um, but yeah. All right, guys, so that pretty much covers the topic for today. Um, so like I said, this is just meant to be kind of a rough overview, more of kind of a manual versus automatic. And like I said, I'm not getting into a lot of detail on each one or uh, specific models. Um, if you're interested in some specifics on a certain transmission or model or whatever, um, throw us a comment out and uh, we'll, we'll do what we can to get back to you or do, do our due diligence, I guess, on that part um, and uh, give you the best information we can. Um, so guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, we appreciate you. Uh, you know, new subscribers and all that. If you're not subscribed, please get subscribed. And uh, you know, as always, give us a thumbs up, like the video, and all that good stuff. And uh, as well, hit the updates so you can get more great videos like this one uh, coming out in the future. So, um, guys, appreciate the support. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.